Hi, everybody. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the Design Lecture Series, Spring 2024. Uh, my name is Francesca Riccardo. I'm one of the instructors of architecture, and I'm managing the lecture series this semester. What are the lecture series? They are design lectures about design, architecture in general, and are focused on Italian context. What do we do? Uh, we invite uh, Italian architects and we ask them to share with all of you their own experience. We ask them to talk about their own methods, their own projects, their own architectural firm, and all of those kind of things. Why do we do that? Because we expect that uh, the experience of such important architects uh, will be inspiring for you and will help you to open up your mind uh, in relationship to the Italian context and architecture in general. Okay, so this is the first one. We will have three more. Uh, the second one is going to be next week already and the other two in March. Uh, we are very glad uh, that we are organizing this because the Rome Center is becoming a sort of a cultural mm. hub where professional comes sharing their backgrounds and experiences. But let's make this long story a little bit short and let me introduce our guest uh, this afternoon. Uh, our guest is Massimiliano Brugia. He is, let's say, a friend of the Rome Center. He is an esteemed architect. Mm. Uh, his architecture firm is named Obiqua, and it is located in Rome. We will invite also people from other towns, but we started with Rome. His office is beautiful, believe me. And um, um, Massimiliano will give a lecture entitled Architecture as a Journey. Please let me read a little bit about it, and then I will give the stage to Massimiliano directly. All right. Uh, so, uh, as Massimiliano says, the scope of our lecture is to introduce our practice and present the experience of doing architecture beyond the mere design of paper. That's great. Our objective is to move the attention from the design level to the process. Wow, I love this word. That the firm experience from the beginning up to the latest projects. Architecture is a journey through time and space. The highlight, as Massimiliano says, will not be on the design of manifacts and interior spaces that we produce, but more on what have been the milestones that our team of architects went through, one after uh, the other, until the project is accomplished. As Massimiliano said, again, we believe uh, that for architecture students like you, it can be more interesting to understand how to practice as an architect rather than just watching architecture projects, you know? Um, moreover, the aim of this lecture uh, is about highlighting what are the main steps to grow an architecture firm. That's very interesting as well. And under what circumstances an architect operates while designing a building and or conceiving an interior space. All right, so this is the introduction to the lecture, as I said, architecture as a journey. And please let me give the stage to the esteemed friend and professional architect, Massimiliano Brugia. Massimiliano, please. Thank you, Francesca. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Welcome to Rome. I know it's going to be like a very interesting semester for you here. And definitely will experience a lot of uh, Italian architecture and definitely all the reason why you're here, they will, they will be met. So as Francesca introduced, probably I can just switch to the second slide because you already introduced it. Um, I, was a, I was a student like you, architecture students like you guys. Um, and I used to go to lectures of uh, architects uh, coming to the university, showing their projects, fantastic, archi stars, like we call it nowadays, and so on. And I thought, well, but I used to think about how, how do how these architects they achieve such a you know the big thing of a designing and then building you know fantastic architecture. So how do they do it? You know, and uh, and so I thought tonight I thought maybe uh, rather than uh, going through a discussion over like the, the design how you know how the columns are or the facade etc cetera, etc, cetera, I thought for you it would be a bit more interesting to 
understanding how it happened, you know, and how it's happening. That's why the title is like it's a journey. I mean, you already started your journey as architects. You know, you you have been studying already for some years, and you already started. So I would like to introduce how it started for me, how it happened for me, and how how I kept going after being a young a young architect, young professional. I started my career and I, I kept moving, and I I was I was lucky because I I got to experience to design and build fantastic things. Um, and so I would like to share with you a bit my experience tonight, just, just for introducing some tips, some feedback for you, for all of you that will one day become an architect, a professional, and you probably will experience same, similar situations, OK? Uh, what? Ah, this way. Okay. Okay. First of all, okay, who we are? Okay, Francesca said we are. We are. A, we are a design firm. We we are design oriented firm. You know, like it means that we aim to do architecture. We aim to do design. You know? We are not just a, a commercial a commercial firm. You know, we don't just do anything. We just try to you know achieve a result in terms of a contemporary design. Uh, Obiqua um, is, is a firm made of three partners. One of us is, is here, Lucia Cadenacci. Thank you for coming, Lucia. And uh, we, have a, we have an office in Rome. We are also have an office uh, in, Mil in Milan. So we are really an Italian firm. Uh, we have a presence in the United States. So it's a bit, it has been a few years that we started to work also in the US, especially in the West Coast. So, um, we are familiar with uh, with also the experience of uh, practicing architecture in the United States. We were established in 2008, so no long time ago, but it has been a while already. Um, it was the three of us. The other one is Valerio Campi. He's not here tonight. Uh, we were students like you in the university. We studied together, and at some point we decided to to get together and uh, and start a practice which is first tip, is, is probably one of the best things to do is to gather together and team up. Because nowadays, practicing architecture is difficult. It's specialized. Everybody does a little part. So having partners, business partners, it, it will help already. Also the, the beginning, especially the beginning. OK. So we are focused on a comprehensive um, design. and. Uh, we work with uh, with multidisciplinarity. What does it mean for me? Uh, comprehensive is that we try to do uh, architecture, interior design all together. We work from the beginning till the end until the, the work is, is accomplished, and we try not to be specialized in anything in particular. We want to do architecture. That's it. That's all. We since the beginning we we decided not to specialize in any particular type of architecture because we we, we believe. And this is typical from the Italian culture uh, that you know architect is a wide range. You know, you 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 are not just a, like a, 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 a you know office archi office building architects or residential architects, um, so on. So we believe like like the human uh, scale, it's 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 all there, and an architect should should be dealing with any type of architecture. You know, it doesn't matter what what type. Spirit of the place. We are focused on, on the spirit of the place. Uh, in Italy, this is a strong concept. Um, they teach us since the beginning to deal with the place where we are going to work. You know, so we we try to catch the spirit. You know, what is the spirit? It's it's something in the culture. It's something in the tradition of the place. It's, it deals with people. It, it deals with the way they live, the way they perceive, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, uh, being like a an architect for us, it means you know taking care of all these aspects beyond the the, the mere building. You know. We want we always try to uh, get to know the people, and and you will see later that we've been working in several countries with completely different cultures worldwide. And the key to succeed for us always be has always been trying to understand that Asia is not North America, and North America is not Europe, and so on. So. Yes, an architect can design for everywhere in the world. We are architects. We 
We can design anything, we can design everywhere. The point is trying to approach the, the place, the culture of the, the nationality where you're building in a particular way. Uh, what we do, as, as, as I said, we do architecture, we do interior design, we do master plans, and we used to, and we actually do, we do project management for our projects, which means that we, we take the end of the client, of the stakeholders, and since the beginning, since the early stage of the design, we go through the whole process. We try, whenever it's possible, to go through the whole process. So it's really like a wide vision of architecture. Some of you will, be, will become like a designer, some, some of you will become a project manager, some of you will become like a supervisor in the construction. There are many aspects of the design, that's why you need to work in team. But ideally, a firm should deal with the, the whole process as much as possible. Um, and where we do it, okay, let's come to the point. Um, we, since the beginning, we, we started our practice. We were like a small firm of uh, young architects, just freshly licensed. And we had the opportunity to, at some point, to work abroad. So not, not only in Italy, we started in Italy, of course, but for some reason, uh, we started to work in, in, a, in a series of countries, you know? So Asia, Southeast Asia, Africa, uh, especially Africa, and then, uh, of course, Europe, and then lastly, North America. Um, very difficult for a small firm. So we, as I said, we are not a multinational corporate firm. We're just like a, a team of architects, a group of architects that challenged the, the design process. And we tried to, we tried because, you know, we, we not always made it. Uh, we tried to achieve a good level of, uh, of design and, uh, and, and try to always bring in something better, you know, improve the place where we went. Um, yeah, architecture is, is a lifetime journey uh, through places, culture, and any aspect of, of, of the life that you, you will have. Probably already now, right now you experience this. You are here in Rome, and as I said, your journey already started you are starting to catch anything that you can learn from Italy or Europe. And, probably, and then when you go back to the United States, you will bring this with you for your, for your entire life. Maybe one day in the future, you will do a competition in Europe. You will design something for Europe and you'll remember what you learned from the Italians, from the... And definitely you will succeed better than some of your colleagues that didn't come from place here, who didn't visit. So uh, it's, it's a great opportunity, the one that you have right now, to be abroad to study and after this, probably internshiping for some company somewhere else, travel, 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 and get together with the people and the different cultures who really make your broad knowledge. So that's probably one of another tip that I have for you. Like, that's what we did, you know? Every, every place we visited, every culture we had to face, made us better, better person, better professional. Okay, as I mentioned before, we would like to not just show, show you projects tonight, but quickly going through a series of milestones that our firm went through the process. Uh, we started the firm, I was 27 years old, so probably almost your age. And uh, in the beginning it was very hard and I honestly didn't have any idea how to, to design, really. Uh, the first milestone, first project was, in, was made for China. So we are back in, uh, especially in Shanghai. So it was 2008. And uh, in 2010, uh, uh, there, was, there would have been the, the Shanghai Expo, uh, which is like a large market. I don't know if, who knows the expo here? You guys know what, what is an expo is? So it's where like every country, any country, develop a building and exhibit everything, the best things that the country has to the, to the, other, to the rest of the world. So that year was uh, China was, uh, was hosting this uh, great experience. It's probably in terms of visibility, in terms of uh, 
experience is probably the best op the best things that an architect can do is designing a, the national pavilion. So you design the United States pavilion to an expo, you know, it's fantastic. In this case, in this particular case, uh, we, we entered, we joined the competition for Italian pavilion, of course. Um, it's very dark because we have a lot of lights, but um, in, this, in this project, we try to reinterpret what, what means living in, 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 into an Italian city. You know? And uh, yeah, the reputation of a national urban spirit, you know? So what, that, what, what we call it, the Italian historical multi-layer city, like Rome is a multi-layer. You, you, you dig, you find a city from 18th, 18th century, then you dig, you dig more, 17th century, and so on, until the Roman Empire. So it's like a layer of stuff, layer of different cities. And so that's what we try to design at the time. Plants, it's weird plants. Basically, it was made of this kind of layers. So we wanted to provide the visitor with an experience of going through layer, layering, through a layering um, path. And so we, we, we broke the, um, the building into several pavi so small pavilions. So you could really be outside, be inside. The expo usually is, a, is an event that takes place in summertime. So you, you stay outside. And uh, well, we study circulation, a lot of things. Um, we have an axio here showing how, how probably you would perceive the space if this pavilion would have been built. Because it, didn't, it wasn't built, actually. It was not built. We got this competition. We got the third prize. So we didn't actually build it. But why was a milestone for us? Uh, it was a milestone for us because better than if it was built, this, this particular design got a strong recognition on the media worldwide. As I said, the, the, ex, the expo is an international event. It's a worldwide event. So we, at some point, we, we got published in... Uh, a series of magazines, many languages worldwide. We started to have email from potential clients from everywhere in the world. It was like a boom for us. So uh, from Saudi Arabia, from Italy, uh, we got like, they made a book for it, a lot of architectural magazines. At the time, internet was not so strong uh, for architecture as the magazines. So everything did, up, did happen in the magazines. So if you get published in the magazines, boom, bingo, you know. And th this brought us to the second milestone because really I, I would like to um, stop a second and, 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 and show you this fact that in a professional life, uh, what is important is to, you know, get clients. You know, you need to get a project and then you need to get another project and then you need our projects. So it's important to never break this, this flow of, uh, of clients. Uh, in our case, what made us uh, grow and survive was, you know, media. You know, we, we got exposed into the media, and so we started to get phone calls. And probably this is something that could happen to you soon if you start practicing. Um, I was... Right after university, I, I went to New York City and I did my first um, work there. I, I, I was hired by a firm, by a, a big firm uh, in New York, and I, and I was there working. And when we did that competition projects, my, my two partners they were in Italy, so we, we, were, we did a competition together while I was far. And we were taking advantage of the, the, you know, the, the, the fuse, the, the eight hours difference to at some point, we work like overnight. We were working, working like, you know, 24-H. And, and that's why we, as a, as a small group of professionals, we could, you know, beat the, the big guys. But then from there, this experience brought me to, to the Southeast Asia. We're talking about Malaysia. This is my, our second milestone. Um, we got a phone call that's one day, actually an email, and then a phone call from a local firm. Malaysia at that time was one of the, they call it the, the, the Asia Tigers. They were like really 
uh, having an explosive an economy. They were like, really, they were, a, they still are a fast developing economy. Uh, the good thing there is that they love modern, they love contemporary design. So they were doing good stuff, but they didn't have enough architects. So that's crazy because usually in the, in the developed countries, uh, we are too many compared to the, to the clients. There, they, they were, there was a lack of architects. So this guy called me and said, oh, do you want to join venture with me? Do you want to team up with us? We do good projects here. I said, yes, why not? So I, I just put some pictures of us. Uh, that's that's me, and my partner, and those guys are the team of the local team. So a team of uh, architects, engineers. They're Malaysians people. They were from there, and we did the competition together, and we won. This is the the night of of, of the event where they my my partner got the, the prize, my local partner. And I, I still remember that day when he called me and said, oh, wow, we won. Here we are. It was a surprise. I, I didn't go there that, that day because I wasn't sure. So I didn't take a, a flight to, to Malaysia. I just was waiting at home waiting for, for the, the, the annunciation of the, the, the winner. So we won this project, long story short, and we built this. We built this building here. There's a, it was back 2010. Um, fortunately, uh, with this light on the screen, I don't think we can see. It's dark. Anyway, I have better pictures. So it was, uh, was uh, a, a pavilion at the large University of, of Malaysia, and it was, it is, a business school uh, in Kuala Lumpur. Um, as often happens, uh, one former student of the business school became uh, the owner of one of the largest bank of Malaysia, and he put the money for building this, this construction. He, he gave the money to the, to the school. He founded this project. Uh, why this project has this weird shape, you, may, you probably are thinking? Because this guy was a fan of the feng shui, like many, many Asian people in the culture. So this guy said, I want to I want a feng shui design building. So we put a lot of, a lot of effort in uh, conceptualizing something that could possibly uh, meet his requirements. Uh, so we broke a we broke a building that could, could in general is, is a square box uh, with uh, different rooms for lecturers and and professor and, and teaching into something that would be flowing, you know, would be avoiding any, any straight alignment with the surrounding buildings and, all, and, a, and a lot of the things that deal with the Feng Shui. This is the actual plan, so we didn't go far. And they actually built it this way. That was, that was crazy. And uh, when we conceptualized, yeah, as I said, I was really near by your age. We were almost your age, a bit older. And they began so crazy and they built it. And um, uh, of course, they didn't build it the way I wanted to, you know, because we always have to compromise. Uh, originally, for example, for instance, originally we were supposed to use a lot of metals, a lot of uh, copper. It was like expensive for that situation at the moment. They built it this way, but it doesn't matter because they built it. For me, it was like a big achievement for us. That's another view. And yeah, the, the, the city was Kuala Lumpur, and the university was one of the most important universities of, of, of the town. This city is still attracting uh, a lot of... Uh, people from the countryside. So they have this problem where everybody's moving from the countryside to the, to the city. The city is growing massively. They, they have to double the, new, the size of the university, double the size of the infrastructure, and so on. Third milestone, as I said, uh, from that building, uh, we, got, we got noticed in town. And so we started to have client, more clients and more clients. And 
probably if, if I didn't go there, I would have designed differently. But what we what it saves us was that we actually took the airplane and went there. So we, we established a continuous partnership with the local architects. So we started to work together. And, uh, and, and we started to understand the culture because really that was the, the challenge. Uh, it's a Muslim, uh, Malaysia is a Muslim culture, Muslim, traditional, very traditional Muslim country, um, completely different, unexpectedly. Even though they embraced the modernity, they, they love modern, they love contemporary, they are like really I, at the top level in Asia, it's even better than China, they're still traditional in the way they think, in many ways. This third milestone, this is the Academy of Science, it was a competition, we won this competition, always with the same team, and uh, a few core concepts for, for you. Uh, there was a building an extreme sustainable building, so it's Academy of Science, so there are scientists there, in the Council of the Science, uh, they wanted to have something extreme. They wanted to have something super sustainable, super eco-friendly, super, super, super. And uh, they wanted to incorporate a production of renewable, renewable energies. You can see here like the wind turbines. Ideal. Some other buildings, some other acts already did something like that. The most important feature of this building here is that we wanted to respect the jungle. So. Being there, we understood that for them, the jungle is something important in the, 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 the natural environment. And, and actually, the plot was in the middle of a beautiful part, piece of jungle in the middle of Kuala Lumpur. It was really within the downtown. So the idea was to uh, reduce the footprint. So, so we, we wanted to make it like very narrow at the bottom, and then that will enlarge later, you know? It will open up like a flower. So um, in Malaysia, there is a deep culture for flowers. So even there, when we, talk, we were talking about the spirit of the place, yeah, the, the, the idea of flowers, it is part of their spirit of the place. They really care about their beautiful flowers, beautiful tropical flowers, plants, leaves, uh, rainforest leaves, you know, all these things that you can imagine. So we try to visualize a design that could match with that. The good thing for this, because they didn't build it in the end, we struggled for a couple of years uh, because of the budget. Because the director of that, uh, of that uh, institution, the Academy of Science, he, he was so in love with, uh, with this design that he, he really wanted to build it. But they, he didn't get enough budget from the, from the local government at the time. So he struggled for a couple of years, and then they have to just postpone the project. So now that the project is designed is, in, in, is into a drawer drawer, they didn't build it. But doesn't matter for me, because because I got published, because the most important architectural magazine of Malaysia put me in first page on the front page, and for me it was a big achievement, and. Uh, we have published on mainstream magazines, and especially, especially, we got selected for going to the architecture Biennale in Viennis in the Malaysian team. So there we go. After a couple of years, here we go. Venice Biennale. So we, we got our project. Uh, uh, before, if you tell, if you told me at the time that I would be in the Biennale with one of my design, I would be like, "Are you kidding me? It's never going to happen." And um, even though we did good projects in Italy, in Europe, um, that time, at the time, the Italian government—I mean, the Italian institution—that was supposed to select architects for the Italian pavilion, it, it, it didn't select me. It didn't select us. But Malaysia did did with that project. So, um, and and they did especially. Sometimes, you know, ideas circulate. Uh, at the time, the, the title of the, of the Biennale was called was Common Ground. So they were bringing in all, all designers that have a same way to deal with architecture, you know, and cultures. So what a better 
topic for bringing us the fact that we were an Italian firm, an Asian team, teaming up together for developing the future of a, of a developing country. And, and again, we got published. They call it architectural, the title of this was Architectural Fusion. You know, it, it was sounding good. It was looking good. So it worked. And again, yes, as I said before, the building that, you, that we built was supposed to be all in copper like that, you know, but you know, they built it differently. It was good, it was good enough. We, we, got, we got the people, customers very happy, and that was it. This brought us to another big project that we did back in 2013. That is this one. In Malaysia, still in Malaysia, they were building new cities from scratch, new towns from scratch. Incredible. It's a great experience for, for architects. And uh, honestly, we didn't have an idea how to design a city. But one of the biggest builders uh, of Malaysia contacted contact us and, and said, do you guys want to join us? We are trying to put together ideas and conceptualizing for the city center of this new development. One more time, yes, man, why not? In particular, this is a, it was a master plan for the city center of the city called Saber Jaya, uh, near Kuala Lumpur. It was a room by design of uh, 53 hectares of land. Massive, massive. Um, I still remember the days. We really didn't have, we didn't have an idea how to handle this. Um, what you see here is just like the two high rise uh, of, of the development, but let's go a bit further with this. Ah, okay. Okay, probably this is more clear. So what we, we came up with, the idea is to build like a platform, like a pedestrian platform. All the cars, parking, garage, they will go under. The circulation is under, the transportation is under. On top of the platform, we just have pedestrians. So it's a big plaza, and on top of this big plaza, this big platform where everybody's free to walk everywhere, we build buildings. But not only this, um, the core comes is that not only we wanted to eliminate cars and create a, a pedestrian platform everywhere, uh, we, we put together like what they call it uh, travelators. They're very common in Malaysia. So basically they are like kind of escalators, like flat, you know, so travelators. You just go from one point to the other easily. And the other idea is that all the buildings were connected. So from every point, from every part, you could reach the rest, outside or inside, with a series of balatoys. It was, it was a complex uh, design. Um, there was an hyperconnections of functions and, uh, um, and path. We wanted to open visuals. Uh, we wanted to achieve like a, a great impact over the quality of life of the people. We imagined all this mass of newcomers going to work into these office buildings, Austin corporations, multinational companies, living there for the entire day. And then they take the transportation and, and commute home. We want them to stay, to be happy. And so we, we thought, okay, what's the most beautiful things that Malaysia has? The jungle, one more time. So we work with views. We try to incorporate the jungle with, within the, the buildings as much as possible. One more, this is another image we provided. You can see bridges, bal balatoi, so you can reach everywhere. You, you could feel free to go anywhere. Uh, we try to go beyond the concept of uh, the office building as a glass box, completely close to uh, the, the, the municipality, the people. You know, we wanted to have uh, this transparency, this blocks, where we could do like a mix of functions, mix of commercial, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This 
brought us to another, oh, okay, one more time. Uh, it was a very ambitious project, it's still ongoing. It's, uh, it's a long process. Then, uh, then COVID came, before again we had like, the, 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 the crisis of uh, Lehman Brothers and financial problems, and problems in Malaysia. The, the former prime minister was put in jail because they said that he stole something like $500 million or something like that. So for some years, everything stopped. And in Malaysia, everything is uh, government lead. So all the major construction companies, investor companies are like governmental co companies. So you can imagine that like a financial crisis for the government block everything. Recently, I, I went on their web website and I saw that they, they, they are planning to move on. But it doesn't matter for me one more time because I had the experience of doing something that I never did before in my life. And just because for the fact that I had the chance to familiarize, to train myself with that kind of design made me from that day on capable to take more jobs like that. So usually a client comes to you and tells you, Okay, have you ever done a master plan for 20,000 20, people? And I said, yes, I did it. Okay, so this is another tip for you. I, I think that the most important thing, especially in the beginning, is to, you know, to do your to do experience, you know, to have to build up your portfolio of projects. So I'm not saying that you have to be like a yes man, but yes, you have to be a yes man. You have to, uh, you want to, you guys want to try to do as much as you can, trying to, experiment uh, even if you don't don't feel you're you're capable to do it try experiment and then you build up your portfolio and then the next time you can say yes i did it already and you have something to show you have something to discuss then you become credible and somebody will listen to you maybe one out of ten but then that that's that's the next project so this is the next project this was the next project for us back in 2014 Another huge project. We have been working on this almost a, for a decade with like many different versions. I didn't bring in the, 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 the early versions, but this is the, the latest one. Again, still in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Here, what happened is that there was the, the former Olympic uh, village, the stadium of Kuala Lumpur, was falling apart. So one of the biggest company of Malaysia, MRCB, still another government lead company, um, got an agreement with the government to renovate the stadiums and, the, and all the annexes. So the stadium, uh, the secondary sports center, and etc. in other facilities. In exchange, they would get the land, a premium land in the middle of the city to develop a new neighbor. So here, what we did one more time was to think of how cars can impact the quality of life of people and all the infrastructure, parking, uh, roads, highway, freeways, et cetera, et cetera. And we, we thought, we, we, we conceived this piece of land, this is huge, one more time, it's really like we're dealing with something like huge. It was completely out, out of my, my mind, like I really, I didn't know what to do. We started slowly. We went there, we see the place several times. Days and days of brainstorming to how do we deal with this? At the end, we came up with the idea of separating. It's a simple idea in the end. So here is another tip for you that I would like to bring in is that keep it simple. Because if you start with a very simple concept, basics, then you, you can, you can do something that it can work, and later you have plenty of time to design on top, so to make it beautiful, make it better. But the beginning, simple scheme, it has to work, it has to be feasible. So here, well, the main idea was simply to, I didn't want to mix uh, residential and, uh, and, and office spaces. So I said, okay, I want people to walk. So let's create a business district, I rise, super high rise. In Malaysia, they do it. 50 stories, 60 stories, boom, they go up. Um, and let's do the residential a bit far away. So people will at some point, and let's create two promenades. 
So people will walk from here to here. Of course, for people with disability, they will have travelators, and et cetera, et cetera. But the idea is that you create a city, you have work, home, and people walking back and forth. And in the middle, what do we put? Commercial. On the way home, you can grab some food and go home. You know, this seems, was a simple scheme. This allows us to create everything pedestrian. So those are two big hills full of jungle. We create these bridges that are across the jungle. So you're walking, you have a feeling that you're walking in the jungle, but actually you're on a, on a human scale uh, path. And then you can, of course, have something in the middle to stop, pause, shop, do some shopping, and then go home, or vice versa. That was the idea. As simple as it is. Of course, the design, there's nothing simple here. Okay. That's what I what is it's probably one of my biggest tip for you, you know. It was a simple scheme. But then when you go when you go design, you can really do whatever you want, whenever is possible. I don't go crazy for, for this kind of stuff, but we wanted to show up, you know. Uh, in Malaysia, in the Southeast Asia, in China, they have this uh, particular feeling for the iconic buildings, so they wanted it iconic. They want buildings to say something. And so you, you can experiment a lot of shapes, a lot of design. But for, for us, what was important was to really think of a city that could work. People be happy walking to work. I know. A couple of the images. OK, this is a, the, the axonometry. As you see, uh, don't, get, don't get scared about the scale because that's the scale that works uh, for those countries. One more time, you're talking about millions of millions of people that within 10, 20 years, they gather into a megalopolis from the countryside, so they really need space. Residential, which we try to put everything together, keep, make it like a village, and then there arise for the office buildings and, uh, and the corporate. So workplace, workspace, residential, the promenades made of is suspended from the, the, two, the two hills. So these two promenades connecting everything. Commercial, big mall, and again, like hotel, service apartments, something in the middle. The stadium, the sports city, everything was there. Uh, what they do in Malaysia is that they create these kind of satellite cities and then they connect it with highway. In the middle, you, you're just across the, 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 the jungle, there's nothing. So this is like a city itself. Another view. Uh, I'll just go quick on here, but I would just like to highlight the fact that in our projects, we always try to uh, think of the natural surrounding. So if you see in our renderings, we always have like whatever it is there. In this case, we have like a lot of water, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a rainforest uh, uh, climate, it rains a lot, and then they have to gather this, all this water at some point into like artificial lakes, jungle, trees. So if, if I was building somewhere else, I would have, think, I would have thought differently. Um, just another view. We can have fun anyway, doing crazy things, crazy concept. And this was a view of, uh, of, the, of the group of the, of the village for the residential. So the idea is that everybody's living up there, but you create a public space. It's always about public space. It's always about you want people to meet each other. You know? we, need, we, need, we need to talk to people. We need to stay with people. So we as architects, are one of the, I think, my belief is that one of our main mission is to allow easier, the easiest possible, than possible iteration between human people. In these days, we are all on Instagram, we are using technology, and the trend is that we are no longer meeting each other. So I think that we as architects, we need to still build real spaces, physical spaces for people to gather together as a community. So we have to grow communities whenever possible. Let's go to the, quickly to the fourth milestones. You know, we make a big jump. We're going to Saudi Arabia, we're going to the Middle East. Again, um, if I was just 
that uh, if we did just work in Italy or in Europe, probably we'll never get to, to Saudi Arabia, to Dubai. I think everybody knows Dubai and the crazy stuff that happened there in the past 10 years. Um, we didn't succeed there, but we, we did something. Um, and we were brought from these big projects that we were developing at the time into another Muslim country. So, just to say, since I was teaming up with a, and I was a, with a half Muslim team, and we were doing all these kind of projects, master planning, IRIs, projects that I showed you before, then those, all those projects, they brought me to another level. They brought me to deal with, uh, with Arabs. This is me. These are the, the local Malaysian partner. We went there with the Malaysians because they were more close to the culture of a, of a Muslim country such as a Dubai or Saudi Arabia. And so they brought me in and there, there was these two guys, they were like two big developers of, um, of Dubai and they, they were working in Dubai Marina, they were developing completely new areas. So you can see Dubai down here. And they had this huge piece of land that they just fill in with, with sand. It was like part of the sea, but they just, created artificially from, from scratch. And they were looking to build, uh, um, of course, a rise, of course, modern building, of course, a big hotel, a big investment. They want to sell apartment. They're, they're looking for money to make money, of course. So it's a different, uh, it was not a social, it was, there was nothing social, it was not a social environment, it was a like business environment. Doesn't matter because we need to design, no? We are architects, we want to design all the time. And whenever, we have, a, we have to deal with speculators. Uh, we, 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 have to we have to deal with them because they're part of the community. They're doing something, they're building, they're investing their money, they're risking their, their money, everything they have for, for projects. So we, do not, we shouldn't look at them in a bad way. But of course we can mitigate the damages that they can make to the, to the <laughs> community. So, uh, Therefore, my point of view is that we can really do our job in a good way. It doesn't matter who the client is. Anyway, uh, long story short, we designed this. It was a mixed user residential uh, plus hospitality. Of course, it was an Arise projects, uh, apartments, hotel, sharing amenities. This was the concept. Uh, as I said before, the concept should be, in my opinion, the easiest and possible. So, whatever the client told me was, I want to have a, par a tower, I mean, he didn't say a tower, but he said, I want to have a, like a, this amount of apartments to sell. We wanted to have a small hotel as well, service apartments, and we want to have amenities in common. I took him I took his word literally, literally. And I said, good, residential tower, hotel, but how do they share amenities? Let's create a tower in the middle. Let's make a bit of uh, marketing, call it vertical oasis. Let's create like these spaces where they can gather. This was a block of uh, home office. So a small office where you can, you can go there and uh, have a meeting, have a call, conference call, work, whatever, uh, shared meeting rooms, et cetera, et cetera. And so they were connected at some point. Then, okay, there was a podium for uh, sport facilities, pool, et cetera, everything, all these uh, activities. Because we are going through a century where you always face the problem of uh, designing complex organism. So you won't probably design anymore like a home, a hotel, but you probably have to design something that it's a mega structure, something that is um, it's difficult to, to explain, you know. Uh, Colas wrote a book about it, you know, uh, junk spaces, I call it it's like these big spaces where they are undefined. You cannot say it's a, it's a temple, it's an hospital, it's a hotel. It's, it's just all together. Okay, so that was another view. Another view. 
I like this elevation very much that, I, that, I, that an intern did for me at the time. So I, I wanted to share with you because it was really a beautiful drawings. Beside the renderings, and now you, you old guys are trying to do renderings, running to show how it's going to look like. But the, the point is that you should never forget, in my opinion, that you should, we are architect, we, we deal with drawings. We do drawings. We don't do buildings, we do drawings. Okay, so you want to make sure that the drawings can be built, but no matter what, they will always build something different from what you design. So the, the beauty of the drawings, the drawings are for you, probably. An engineer will, will never understand um, these things, like a financial advisor will never understand. But this is for us, but it's for us to understand how, how good we did the job. Fifth milestone, okay, that project went bad, okay, went bad, it didn't work at all, but we'll see later, it brought me to something else, okay, especially the experience, you know, if sometimes somebody comes to me and says, oh, have you ever designed in Dubai? I say, yes, I did design in Dubai, I'm ready for the next projects, okay, anyway, at some point, I like to do this because I would like to demonstrate to you that your career is built on a, on a network, you know, and, and the way in time and space you build a net, okay? And, you know, from, from Italy, from the United States, I went to Shanghai, that project brought me to the Southeast Asia, then this other project brought me to, brought us to Middle East, and then at some point, going back in, in time a little bit, still that project from Shanghai brought us to the Northern Asia, to M Mongolia specifically, which is this town very close to the Siberia, to Russia. It's really a very tough place. We met, we met another architect, another, another business, and they were dealing with a super fast developing country. Boom, they found out mines, they had uh, copper, gold, etc., etc. Right away, when a, when a country develops, they start building. And whereas the money starts to speculate on building to sell, etc., etc. So that happens. And, and, and I said, yes, one more time. I said, yes, I'm coming. I'm coming to visit. We're going to establish a firm here together. We team up and we worked together. And when we went there, he, this, was, this, was, this was a tough one. This was a tough one. Um, I don't know if you have an experience of Mongolia, those kind of places where they are like Russian language, Russian culture, very closed, and they, are, and they have like a strong tradition with their culture. So they are very, very close to having modernity in. So you really, really have a tough time. They do a nomad life there. So mostly they're facing the same problem than any other developing country. Poor people from the countryside, they move to the, to the main city because there you can, you can, you can have better expectation of life, for, for your quality of life. Simply you can, have, you, you can just not die because of the cold. Here we are talking about temperature that in winter time they can reach minus, minus 40 degrees, you know, worse than Canada. So, um, they were facing this urbanism. So the city, without infrastructure, suddenly double and triple the population within a few years. So they build, they build, they build, but they, uh, sometimes the government can take over, some other time they just leave it to the, to the private sector, and the private sector just cares about this plot. It doesn't care if it's going to create traffic, if the infrastructure works, if the subway stop there, nobody cares. Anyway, these people, they love to stay here. They, they love to be nomad, what they do, they do, they farm animals and they have this, they, they tend and seasonally they move in, in two days, they get rid of the tent and they go somewhere else. They put the tent in another place. They love to stay in the wild. They love it. And they don't really love to stay inside the house, a regular house. So how do you deal with these people that they, they just go there? Tough, huh? Um, 
and they don't build, they never built. So we have been there and we didn't, didn't have specialized workers. So they really face big technological problems. One more time, I have no idea how to deal with this, nothing at all. The first year I went there and they gave me to do an arise. One more time and I rise. And the local team, they made me submit to the civil engineer department for building high rise, higher than 26 stories, still remember that. And I was probably one of the five or six uh, architects in the whole country to do that. And I wasn't even from the country. That was, I mean, scary. Anyway, this is the other phase, you know, this is Ulaanbaatar. So it's, it's in a valley. They just eat, uh, they have a system for um, teleheating, I don't know how you call it in the United States. It's, uh, they just pretty much have huge coil power plant and they add hot water from there. Then they have huge pipes, the whole Soviet way to deal with the cold. They have these hot, huge pipes that run around the city and they heat up the old buildings. If you get unplugged, you die, it's, everything freezes. But coil in, in the city creates, sorry, I go back, a fog of coil, people can breathe. So now, now they're facing this problem. The city didn't have any infrastructure, uh, no road, cars were going everywhere. Um, they're, they're, they're fixing this now slowly, but that was the environment where I had to work. And, and, and one more time, uh, what I did, I just built up a relationship uh, with the team. This is, this is me, um, my partner Valerio, and those are the, the local, this is the local team, the local firm of architects and engineers. So we started to, the first thing we did, we went there. I used to go there once a month to really get to know the clients, get to know the, the situation, get to know the culture. And it's all about there. It's all about knowing the people. So another tip for you uh, is that beyond just building, simply building, building constructions, you get to deal with the people around it. It's really 90% of the deal. Designing on the paper, 10% of the deal. So if, you, if some of you want to create his own firm, we'll have to understand that you have to deal with the, with the people. You have to convince them to do stuff. You have to allow them to understand your point of view, it's simply, you know? And if they don't speak your language at all, um, they don't know your language, they don't know the, they don't have translators, you just, just have to look at your, looking in the eyes and trying to explain it's a challenging situation that you, that some of you very soon may, may have to face. I put this project because it's, it was something important. Again, a master plan for 10,000 inhabitants. The idea here uh, of, the, of the developer was a good idea, was to say, well, instead of, uh, this is a, a town in Dahran, it's really one of the closest regions close to Siberia, uh, not, good, not nice to live there, but the idea was, okay, instead of having all these people moving to the city, why don't we try to imagine, conceptualize towns that are fully serviced with new standards of quality, utilities, and everything they need, so they, will, they won't have to go to the main city. They can live there. So one more time, trying to make a community work. And here, the main idea was to, I went there, two days of uh, travel in the middle of nowhere, uh, no bathrooms, anything. We went there, we explored, and uh, I found a beautiful nature. Um, they have a fantastic river, beautiful, they have the mountains, and especially the people love that place. They love to be, all the Mongolians that are in the, in the town, whenever they can, they go camping, probably like we do. They, we escape from, they escape from the town and from the city, and they go camping. They, they, they love the, the wildlife. So 
we thought, okay, why not? Let's try to imagine an economy based on a local, a local, uh, um, how do you call it, Past pastries, and why not tourism? Let's bring in people with helicopters or with the, like, let's build a road, but let's improve the quality of uh, the financial situation of the local people. Let's make them live there. Quick, no, for the velocity. Okay. So what we did. Uh, was to imagine buildings that, one more time, the speed of the place, they live in this gird around it. So we try to imagine small homes that look similar, where they can feel comfortable. And trying to create a relationship with the river, maybe water sport, boardwalk, trying to, one more time, avoid cars, and create like community buildings. Well, there in winter time it's very difficult, very hard to stay outside. But one more time, small homes, some community buildings. Shape matters sometimes, psychologically. So if you are used to living in a, in a round tent, then you don't want to live in a concrete square. Maybe the good way, a good way could be, you know. But not only that, but we also do like. A, Again, arise modern buildings, also from Mongolia. Um, this was like in, in the, city, the city center downtown. So one more time, we try to do the best we could. And it's now under construction. Stuff moves slowly. So you also have to be patient sometimes. One of the latest milestones, I'll go quick. Uh, we went to Africa. Africa is really difficult to work with. But we did uh, several buildings. This is like an office building. Cities are crowded. We try to bring in a new, a new, some kind of new concept. Uh, also, they're, they're trying to go high, be high rise because the, the, the population is, in, is, is increasing, so they don't have space. Even there, we, we try to deal with, with the local. You can build a glass building. How can you build a glass, glass building in Africa? Well, you can, uh, you can, uh, but when you in, install the glass, then probably you need to think of like a dark glass. You know? Shape. We're also trying to change the shape of the actual, what, what are the common office buildings to make it more livable, you know, to open the views. Constructions, plenty of time to waste. Another another development we did, we built, actually this was built nearby there, trying to do our best. Again, still in Accra, the capital of the city of Ghana, another master plan, urban planning. They were trying to relocate the city. They were actually, it's called cantonments because it was like where the, the police department was, pretty much the, the army, so they moved the army um, buildings out of the town and they wanted to develop the, this prime premium land. So we, we made a proposal for that to, to gather, you know, in, international investors. Another building here, we won the competition. Not built yet. It takes time. This was for the National uh, Oil Company of Africa, of Ghana. 3,000 square feet. As I said, we try to do our best. One other milestone for our office, uh, we, what we call it working with science. At some point, we started to work with the labs, uh, uh, science buildings, especially in Italy. And uh, I would like to bring to your attention uh, this one. There is a research center of the European Molecular Biology Labs here in Rome. It's under construction at the moment. Uh, Lucia, my partner, is, uh, is working on it with the project management. and. Uh, it's a public work, so with the government, we're having some struggle there, but it will be built soon. Here we are trying to, you know, even here, we're trying to do our best, as best as we can. We're thinking in this particular case of a scenario where scientists need to gather and share information. So instead of staying into closed labs all day, we're trying to, cre to, to create, to create space of conviviality, spaces where they can gather, they can talk, where each where any each unit can talk to the other one to create new ideas to help fix. 
uh, and we did this during COVID, and they were studying the viruses, they were studying the COVID, especially the RNA uh, vaccinations. So for us, it was something very important. Uh, some details, but yeah, I, I, won't, I won't stop the conversation on, on, draw, on this kind of drawings because definitely they don't impact our conversation tonight. One more building. This is a, is a, is a massive development. Uh, again, it's a, it's a, research, it's a research, research center in, uh, in Milan. We joined the competition that they did a few years ago. We got the third prize, so we didn't build it. Again, we didn't get the first prize, we got the third one, but for us it was like an important moment to implement the cap capacity, the capabilities of our team, of our people, of my architects. And in these projects, uh, the problem they had, the, mo the, the main problem was to find a way to make the, the science get closer to the community. You know, we, we are not especially actors, we are not really um, into it, and, but they really wanted to communicate somehow what's happening inside. So in the competition, what they were asking for was to find a way, which we find through the facade, to create like a moment for, for them to, ex to you know, explain what they're doing. So we create this facade as a screen. They are, they are studying the genoma, human genoma. So we, we create this facade as a, as a possible explanation of it. I won't, I won't go much further into detail. The building is all here, it was very much about the facade inside like specific labs. I, I won't tell you now how difficult it was to put all the, all the um, re requirements together. But we did try to, to create a, an iconic building that could communicate something. Last milestone and then I'm done. And um, it's United States. Recently we've been working in, uh, in uh, Utah. Um, and we've been doing residential. It's, an, it's all another feature. Uh, these are homes, uh, mountain homes uh, in the ski resorts. Uh, a lot of fun, you know. We don't have to be all the time social. Sometimes you can have fun, uh, get good client, good cash, why not? Um, we started with this home. For us, it's important because uh, it was built uh, at 8,100 feet. So it was a big, big design challenge. Um, it's, it's, on Power, it's called, it's in, this is called uh, Power Mountain. It's, uh, it's a ski resort, one of the most beautiful of Utah. Uh, tough to reach and tough to build. Dome was a, was a small home, 5,500 square feet. But the point is here that everybody in that community loved our, what we did, loved our design. And this means that we got more involvement. We got more phone calls and they told us to keep going and doing more projects. You know, so this was this home at the end of the day. Um, Probably more closer cultures were built with framing, regular framing, metal. Uh, but we brought a bit of Italian um, concepts uh, in terms of the way the perspective works, uh, central perspective, the way we designed it as, as if it was a palace, but actually it was just a home. And here, the main focus for us was working with nature, the natural environment. You know, the United States is beautiful country and the wildlife is impressive. We don't have anything like that in Europe. For us, the biggest challenge was to understand that you need to deal with this. You know? and, and, and this Utah especially give, give us the, the possibility to start working in a, in a land where you are just surrounded from the beauty of the nature, mountains, river, creeks, etc. And so you have to do a good job because your client is the guy who's going to build, but your client is also the nature. You want to make sure you don't mess up with what is around. So you have to be also aware of the responsibilities that we all have as architects, you know, which is preserving as much as possible you know, the planet. This is another home. 
and I loved it because it was built very, very near to a, to a creek um, with falls, fantastic cold, cold water. So we tried to, you know, minimize the impact of that. Of clients built that plots you wanted to build there. Uh, honestly, I would have built a bit far than from the creek. We have a lot of wildlife going there in the morning to, to drink water, like deer and eggs. But you know that's what it is. So what you what you do as an architect, you want to minimize the impact of the ideas of the clients, of the builders, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we do have a social responsibility even in uh, small projects. You know, it doesn't have to be a big project to to you know to, to good good job, but also small projects are important and they are crucial for the career. So that small project that I showed before is, is leading us to a series of large mansions also in, the, in the California that we're doing right now, but in show, but it's important for your career. And the more, more clients you get, the more projects you get, the, mo the most you can you know, be, be effective. Thank you very much. So I wish you all, thank you for being here and enjoy Rome as much as you can. All right, Massimiliano, thanks a lot. It was really a great lecture, full of inspirations. I was sketching and sketching the whole time, like this, 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 and that. So I found it very, really, really inspiring. And thanks for sharing your experience as a designer. You told us your journey. And it is amazing how networking could really like you know, brought you all around the world because this is what you've been doing. You started from one and then two, three, four, jumping all around the world. And even being so lucky and expert to build up in Rome, which is considered to be a honor. It's so difficult, guys, to build up in Rome, believe me. So I, I really want to make my compliments for the presentation and all the projects. So... Um, you can come here so that they can see you. Um, we have time just for one or two questions because we are running a little bit out of uh, time. So if you're curious, guys, about some things, don't feel like embarrassed. Uh, Massimiliano is here for you. Um, even if you have just like practical questions about, you know, the studio, his experience, or you're curious about some things, uh, feel free to ask questions. Is there anybody interested? Hmm? Oh, don't be shy. Oh, yes. Wait a moment. Uh, come here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. Thanks for. <laughs> thanks for this. We appreciate it. <laughs> speak into the microphone okay uh my question was you went over pretty much most of the highlights of your career and all the high points but getting a firm started at the age of 27 what were like the hard you know like times like especially like getting started like how did you go about doing that and like how did you overcome those issues or obstacles i'm gonna sit down now that's a good question thank you for asking thanks <laughs> thank you for asking uh so in the beginning the, the biggest problem you may face is credibility. You know, you're a young professional. They don't believe you can make it. So how do, you, how do we do it? In, in, in particular, we try it. So what we did is like, OK, you think I'm not, I'm not able to do it. Give me a few days. we we'll meet again. I'll make a try for you. That, that's what we did. It. Of course, then you have to work hard on this. But sometimes you make it, sometimes you don't. Really, it's like 10 to 1. Like 10 times you don't make it, one time you make it. But you try, you give it a try. And, and then once they see it, we have the, as I said, we have the drawings with us, you know. We can make great drawings and, uh, and they can be impressed. That's how we, this is the main problem that we did. And of course, then organization, uh, setting up a firm, it's, it's really a problem. But it's not that difficult as you may imagine. So yeah, financial problems. We started with little money, probably with zero money. And, and then you slowly go up, you know, from a small projects, second project. The, the key to succeed is always to say, yes. Yes, I will try. Yes, I will do. Let me try. Let me do. Let's see. 
competitions. Uh, you have to sneak in every single possible opportunity. That's what it is. But may I tell you some things, and thanks for the questions, by the way. I find it surprising how this was possible with only three people in the studio. It's amazing. The amount of work, I mean, the such big projects with three people. Well, we had, uh, we had uh, during the time, uh, good interns, uh, we had a few employees in the beginning that they would make a difference. One more time, the team, it's the mo one, of, one of the most important thing. Mm -mm. Yeah. The people. The people. Uh, just one more question. If is there anybody willing to ask uh, Massimiliano, please come here. Hi. Uh, oh, hi. Uh, I noticed that a lot of your work had a lot of, um, in particularly hot climates, with a lot of glass facades. And I was kind of wondering how you dealt with the environmental like implications of that and how you mitigated the, uh, the heat transfer and things like that with uh, the glass facades. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> so here is a like, gla glazing systems that nowadays they are everywhere. So you, it is something that it can, it can be an opportunity for design but you need to do it in a proper way. So usually, uh, if you want to use glazing, then you have to try to design the facade in, in a way that you are considerate of uh, the orientation of the building. All the things that they teach you in university, they're, they're true. You know, you need to, if, if you are having the sun impact, uh, sun radiation into the, the glass facade, well, then you want to screen it, screen it. Now, if you remember that building that was opening up like the flower, for example. There is the technical reason why we did so. Actually, thank you very much for, for this question because uh, it will give me a, 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 a little more to explain that. In a tropical climate, uh, we have the sun most of the day. It's uh, to midday. So it's like vertical. Mm -hmm. So me, me putting the facades like that, it's automatically help, help, me, help me to shade it. You know, if I did it the, the other way, I, I would probably make a big mistake. But that's why we did it. So we, we avoid, we create like, like an umbrella with the top roof. So they, they, they look down, they don't look up. That was one of the key concepts of that project there, if you remember in the beginning. And so anytime we, we, do, we do a glass facade, there's a way, there was a solution that we used for that case. In that building in Africa, that looks like an infinity thing. Uh, there is, we use like a dark, real dark, dark glass. So the, the, the radiation within the panels is very minimal. It was, it was designed with engineers in a way to allow daylighting at the minimum needed, avoiding the, 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 the sun radiation. But one more time, there we have this, the sun radiation to midday. So in, um, they didn't do in that project, the builder in the end, it didn't build, but we did, we did design all a shading system with shaders and louvers. The facade, of course, would become like a double skin. They didn't have the money, they didn't build. But we did, I'm not have with me the, the, the drawings for that, but yes, we did thought about it. So in the end, it was, it was just cheaper to do dark glasses, but we always want to shade whatever is needed. And uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, in, in these tropical um, climates, they have to use air conditioning no matter what because of the level of humidity. So they have to really create a, a shell and then use a lot of air conditioning. So they, they do need it. Uh, and when you build a rice, you, you have to use a curtain walls. You don't have any other chance. Mm -hmm. You can use brick and so you have to shade it. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so thanks guys for asking questions. Um, it's time to go. Yes, let me close this. So thanks Massimiliano. Thanks everybody. We meet next week. Next week we will have uh, Andrea De Bilio at that studio and it's going to be interesting as well. So let's see soon. Bye everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye.